So we're going to be talking about the SOLIDWORKS toolbox. In order for the toolbox to be available and work properly, you do need a premium version of the software, you need Microsoft Excel installed, and you need an assembly file open. The toolbox is located on the Design Library tab of the Resource Panel. The default location for this is on the far right of your display window. To load the toolbox, by default the toolbox is unloaded. This is because the toolbox is very resource heavy. It uses up a lot of memory. To load the toolbox, go to Tools Add-ins. The toolbox is considered an add-in and the toolbox is only available to premium users or students with a student license with the engineering license engineering version of the student software. To load it, you just place a check on it. Notice there are two sides. On the left side, it is the active add-in. On the right side, that will load it up every time you start up, which I don't recommend because of the amount of resources it uses. Um, you know it's toolbox. It's loaded because it will show up in the menu and you will see the folders underneath the toolbox in the design library. You do need to configure the toolbox before you can use it. By default, the toolbox saves files under program data and if you're changing computers or if you're somehow uh, moving your files around, you can lose the files or parts that you create for your assembly. So it's best to configure your toolbox so that you're creating part files that are saved with your assembly. To configure your toolbox, just um, right click in the toolbox panel and select configure. You want to go to page three of the user settings enable where it says create parts and then browse to the folder where you want your files to be saved. That should be like your work folder. And then save your settings. And if you're using um, a lab computer in the classroom, you need to make sure that you reconfigure the toolbox every time to make sure that it's saving to the correct location. To add a part from the toolbox, you must be in an assembly file. You cannot add a part from the toolbox to a part file, a drawing file, or a template file. If you accidentally try to open a part from the toolbox and you're not in an assembly file, what it does is it opens the file for that toolbox part, which a lot of people find confusing. And then select the folder you want to use. Um, browse for the desired hardware. And it's a good idea to kind of browse through the toolbox to see how the parts are organized. And you'll see it's a fairly complete library of hardware. And when you configure each part, drag the desired hardware into the display window, then select the size, and SOLIDWORKS will generate the hardware automatically. If you have a hole in your part and you place the hardware next to the hole, SOLIDWORKS will guess the best fit size to generate and once you confirm the size, SOLIDWORKS, Solidworks will place the hardware and add the desired mates. Um, just a re quick recap, make sure you load your toolbox using the add-ins, configure your toolbox to save the parts to your folder, and save the configuration, and use your toolbox to locate desired hardware for your assembly. Okay, so we're in the guide assembly file and we're going to add some hardware from the toolbox. And I'm going to start by going over to my design library and um, okay, and I need to check to see if I have the design library that I 
Okay, so I located a design library and I added it in. If you need to locate your design library, just click right here where it says Add Folder. And then look under Program Data, SolidWorks, the revision that you're working in, and Design Library. And then it'll bring in the design library for you. Um, we're going to go to the Parts folder under Design Library and go to Hardware and we're going to locate the flange bolt and we want to add the flange bolt into these two slots. So I'm just going to drag and drop my flange bolt in there and I want to scroll down to the M8-1.25 by 30 size and I'm going to place it twice. Okay, now there are a couple different ways you can add a mate for these flange bolts. We want them centered in the slot. So way number one is to go view, hide show, and turn on temporary axes. And then you'll see these little blue axes. And you'll add a mate between the center axis and the axis for the bolt. And that's a coincident constraint and green check and then top face bottom face of the flange bolt okay if you have um, uh, an uh, if you have uh, an older a newer release of SolidWorks like I'm in 2018 here you do also have a slot mate here so that's under mechanical mates. So you can select slot and say center in slot and um, come up here and select the slot and select the face and you can just flip the mate alignment by clicking on mate alignment over here and that reverses it and then green check and then I'm going to add a coincident constraint between the top face here and the bottom face there. And that's done. And then I'm going to go back to view, hide show, and unshow the temporary axis. So those are two different ways you can bring the flange bolt in. All right, I'm going to come around here. I'm going to go over to my toolbox. My toolbox is right here. Notice I don't have it added in. And that's because by default I don't add in my to toolbox when I launch SolidWorks because of the resource. So I can either click on add in now or I can go to tools and scroll all the way down to add-ins and then this dialog box comes up and I'm going to Put a check here for SolidWorks Toolbox Library and SolidWorks Toolbox Utilities. Notice Startup, I leave blank because I don't want it to auto load when I start up SolidWorks. And then there's a little bit of a pause while SolidWorks goes out and locates the toolbox. And then I come back over here and notice now I have the toolbox. And I want to be an ANSI metric because this is a metric assembly. And I'm going to go to bolts and screws and I want socket head screws and I want a socket head cap screw and notice I can just left click and drag and drop and it'll try and size it so it's telling me it's an M3 um, I'm gonna say I want M3 by um, six millimeters okay and that makes it a little bit longer um, I'm going to I'm going to X out here for a second. If I mouse over here, it tells me the size of the holes and those are four millimeter holes. So I kind of should have checked the size of the holes before I even went to toolbox. So I mouse over and I see the size of the holes. They should be four millimeters. So I'm going to go back to my socket head cap screw. And it said M3, but really what I want is M4. Okay and I'm gonna go to 10 millimeter long so like that right and then I'm gonna green check 
right? And it gives me a second one, and I'll just drag and drop it right there. All right, now notice when it placed it, it placed it with the concentric mate and the coincident mate, and it placed it with the concentric mate and the coincident mate, which is really nice. But I forgot to configure it. So if I go, I'm going to save this for a second, just so you can see. Um, so this is currently saved in my SOLIDWORKS Spring 2018 homework. Um, but notice, if I look at all the parts, um, you're not going to see that part in there. Um, I did a M4 by 10, and you see the M4 by 8, but you don't see the M4 by 10 because I didn't configure it. So remember, I have to right click and go configure, and then go to page three and tell it to create parts and tell it where I want the parts to be. And so it brings up this select folder, and I want it to be under Moss Designs and SOLIDWORKS Fall 2018 Homework. Okay. Then when I create the part, it'll actually create a file for it, and you'll see that. So I'm going to select this sock socket head screw. And once again, before I place it, I really should check the size of the screw. So this says it's an M4. Okay. So I'm going to come over here. place it. It says it's an M4 and I'll say the length is 8 is okay and I'll green check. And I'm going to be done with that one and then I'm going to come over here to the countersunk screw and notice it added a coincident constraint and, but it didn't add, I still have um, rotation. Okay. So if I want to lock my rotation, I can right click and go lock concentric rotation. And notice this one still rotates. So I can add a mate, like a parallel mate between this face and this face. And now that countersunk screw, head screw is fully constrained. And notice if it's got a minus in front of it, it's got degrees of freedom. And if it doesn't, then it is fully constrained. I have one last piece of hardware I want to install. It's going to be a socket head cap screw. Once again, I want to mouse over here. This is an M3 screw. So I'm going to come over, and it's selected M3, and I'll set a length of 6, and green check, and then I'm going to X out. And notice it placed a concentric and a coincident mate, and if I want to lock the rotation, I can just right click and say lock rotation, and then that ro rotation is locked. And what I want to do is I want to pattern this socket head cap screw using pattern driven component pattern. And I'm going to left click right here for driving feature or component and click right there and green check and I am done. See that? See how beautiful that is? All fast, easy, beautiful. And that's all you need to do for this assembly.